Well, it was my last summer of college. I had a job, let's just say I wanted to keep my part-time job, so I stayed in town and got a job with a landscaping company. We were doing this job in the Middle Lake area, and I can hear this truck going by, and it sounds like it's sandblasting. I'm like, what the hell is going on? What are they sandblasting? Like, the road hasn't been fixed. This is on our main freeway through this subdivision, and they're sandblasting this whole area through, and I'm like, what are they doing? Like, why are they sandblasting the lines? away and then they talked about it they were getting rid of the turning lane and creating new bike lanes they wanted to make this nice throughway to go all the way around our full-size lake that the city of Sudbury encompasses Ramsey Lake they wanted you to be able to bike all the way around it so they were getting rid of the turning lane making so I now have to turn from the driving lane in a suburban area so not that bad and adding bike lanes to the side but over the next 20 years of my life I watched the city I live in add more and more bike bike lanes and I keep asking myself do we really need this amount of bike lanes in a car centric city like the city is spending tons of money building throughways to get traffic constantly moving through it and yet anytime we build one of these we add more bike lanes over here and then really you start to take in the concept of the world is changing well I got myself onto this talk with the city of Sudbury about bike lanes and I asked this one simple question what is the main purpose of all the bike lanes? And their answer to me was the one that I initially thought it would be. And that is something we're going to talk today about on the Autolux podcast. Welcome back to the Autolux podcast. I'm your host, as always, the doctor to the automotive industry, Mr. Everett J, coming to you from our main website at autolux.net. If you haven't been there, stop by and check it out. It is one of the most amazing automotive sites you will find with information around the globe, all centralized on one single space. The Autolux podcast has been brought to you by Ecom Entertainment Group and distributed through the Podbeam website. You can find the Autolux podcast on every major streaming service out there from Spotify to iTunes. The Autolux podcast is there for you to find it. So like I said in the beginning, bike lanes. I know a lot of us who love our cars and love driving around our cities are getting really irritated about the amount of bike lanes. These bike lanes are going in and they're taking lanes away from our vehicles just for a bunch of people to get on a conveyance that essentially isn't that much older than the automobile itself to go around the city. You want to go around and propel yourself around the city. Well, things started changing with the advent of the electric mobility movement and adding electric electric mobility to bicycles now where you could bike for a little bit and keep going now this isn't something new this is something we've had around for quite a while but people started taking notice if i live in a major urban center like essentially what happened before covid everybody was gravitating back to the center of the cities and why do i need a vehicle to get around the center of the city the main hub i can use bikes and there's already roads there's sidewalks there's public transit there's all these things i do not need a vehicle and because cities were starting to see this they started adding in bike lanes but all of a sudden with the rise of the electric vehicle industry people started to say hey evs allowed us to move more stuff and we've already been working on building products that can move itself robotics autonomous technology how when they found out about the autonomous drive technology in the original model s's the world went nuts and said we don't have to move ourselves this mobility unit can move for us now what does that have to do with a bike lane well the investments from all these companies into miniature drones to move products from here to there with more people staying home and being able to work from home now and being able to do jobs from home the world is changing and when you consider the fact that we now don't have to leave our domicile to go to work to get groceries to get food to have anything delivered to us well now we're essentially getting trapped in one singular area if you've ever gone back and read the original story of ready player one the main character in the book if you've read it, it it's an amazing book he escapes the government coming down on him because he's won the first round and they're all looking for him they're trying to kill him because they don't want him to win similar to that in the movie so he moves into the city gets into this apartment and because he's got all this money he never has to leave he barricades himself in his apartment playing this game he has food delivered he has clothing delivered every single thing is delivered now drones could take to the skies but in a lot of major urban centers especially in non-developed 
or developing nations, there are a lot of issues with what's in the air. You got power lines all over the place. And like I said, in this subdivision, like huge subdivision, if you've ever been to the city of Sudbury, Menno Lake is the biggest. It runs literally from the east end of the city all the way to the central core. We're talking like probably about 12 to 14 kilometers long. And they put bike lanes in for delivery of products. Now our city, when they originally started this, was for bikes. They wanted people to get on a bicycle and live a healthier life and become more mobile in short distance runs on energy efficient mobility units. They wanted us to become a healthier nation. Consider the fact that I grew up in one of the most unhealthy points of history throughout the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s when everybody was you know, shoving our faces with fast food and eating as much junk food as we could possibly get. But the funny thing is we all had to go out and get it. Now we can literally just sit at home and have everything come to us. So they wanted to create these bike lanes. Now, instead with drones, there's more things in the sky. In this main subdivision, there are still power lines above ground. Now, all the new subdivisions that are being added into this area all have underground cables. But in the old main area, where they were taking this lane out to put these brand new bike lanes, there are power lines. Drones have issues with that. And unless somebody's around to control them, the autonomous technology, it's there. But we still have a long way to go. So delivery trucks like UPS, FedEx, and hell, even Uber, Delivering our products via drone is still a ways off. And consider the city I live in is only about 170,000 people spread across an area larger than, well, some countries. Literally, it's an hour and a half to two hours from east to west. And it's one city. That's a lot of space to cover. So finding an alternative to get things around would be greater. Drones are a wave of future. Yes, they are there, but they still need a central location. So Mercedes a few years ago actually had a delivery van with drones on top of it that would pick up stuff and deliver them to locations as the van drove down the main through. Well, this is a great technology. This is something they're looking into, and especially companies like UPS, FedEx, and even Amazon are especially looking into products like this because they want to be able to deliver more faster. But until we get there, the early 21st century, we had bike lanes being installed to make us more fit. We were tired of being a fat society. Let's get out and use bikes. And trust me, I've used a few of these bike lanes for my own pleasure. I didn't use them to get to work and back. Uh, I've never lived close to work. No, let me rephrase that. I did live close to work before my son was born. We did live close to downtown and I worked downtown. I did bike in the summertime because it was close. We had bike lanes. It was easier. I saved on gas, but I was a salesperson, so there were days I still needed my vehicle. But these bike lanes are becoming a main part of the future of infrastructure. Now, we did a podcast about this, explaining why so many bike lanes are being built and why this is becoming a main fixture for the future of our infrastructure. Roadways, six-lane roadways of the future, are going to be transformed into four-lane throughways for main transportation units, vehicles traveling over 50 kilometers an hour, with that added extra side lane for two-way traffic for delivery pods. If you haven't heard about it, or hell, even if you haven't gone on YouTube and seen our original Auto Looks online video about autonomous vehicles, Domino's built Drew, one of their first autonomous vehicles that could deliver pizza. Now in a central hub like downtown Toronto, Drew can travel on the sidewalk. He's not fast enough to go on the roads. But Domino's, if I live in that area of Middle Lake, Domino's isn't there. Sure, there's Topper's Pizza, but if I want Drew to deliver pizza to me, and I'm willing to wait for him to deliver it, and he can keep my pizza warm for, you know, his 20-minute drive to come deliver pizza to me, then might as well. Nero is another autonomous delivery vehicle delivering products like groceries and general merchandise on an autonomous pod with four main doors. Some of them have three, some of them have four. Domino's utilizes this as well. They put their pizza in, and it can be delivered along with other people's products, so you're not just using the trip as a singular trip, you're multiple. These vehicles need a laneway to drive on. Being skinnier than an average car, the Nero Autonomous Delivery Vehicle is about half the width of a standard automobile. So it doesn't need a full lane. Well, in that sense, considering the fact that it can travel under 50 kilometers an hour in more urbanized areas, it could stick more to a bike lane. Bikers may not be happy about it because they feel that it's their dedicated lane. But unfortunately, they mislabeled it. We call them roadways. Where essentially, for the longest time, they were literally just car lanes. Well, bikes are eventually going to have to get around the fact that they are not dedicated bike lanes. They are slow mobility unit lanes. 
Similar to that, how you have the high occupancy vehicle lanes or HOV lanes on major highways. Going through the city of Toronto, they have these all over the place, especially along the QEW and 403. These are for vehicles with two or more people in them. When they first set these up along the QEW is when they had the Pan Am Games a few years back. They discluded everyone else from utilizing these lanes so they can have direct transit for the Pan Am Games going all across the city of Toronto and not have to deal with traffic. Well, high occupancy vehicle lanes are being extended out on more major throughways in and around this area across major centers all over the world. And they're doing this to try and get people to carpool. And they're also easier for buses. When I go down with my family to visit my in-laws, we use this when I'm on the 403 and QEW because there's four of us in the vehicle. I don't have to sit in the traffic like everyone else. When you look at the other three lanes in the QEW, everybody's zigzagging in and out when they're doing the standard highway speeds and you get those slow people that you know, got to do bang on the speed limit or bang under the speed limit where the average flow of traffic is doing, you know, a bit higher than what the speed limit is. The high occupancy vehicle lanes have a lot less traffic in them. We can move it more at a standard rate, similar to that of the low speed mobility lanes. Bike lanes are not bike lanes anymore. A lot of them are being designed to integrate with sidewalks. Going from your urban to more suburban centers, they're going from a sidewalk appeal into a direct lane appeal. Out in more of the rural type, it's just an extra slab of pavement on the side of the road. But all of these lanes have one context in mind for low speed mobility. I'm sorry, but the bike lanes on the side of the four lane throughway that I drive on, where the average speed of it is between 90 and 100 kilometers an hour, bicycles have their own lane on the side of it. Why can't they be on my lane? Is because they can't stay with the flow of traffic. And when you can't stay with the flow of traffic, well, you're a danger to everyone within that flow. Unfortunately, most police services around the globe don't understand this concept, except for on major interstate states in the United States where they have low speed limits. They understand the fact that slow people are more dangerous than fast people. Fast people who zigzag in and out are dangerous, but slow people, I don't know, what's more dangerous? Um, running into somebody who's going five kilometers an hour slower than you because you're slowly catching up to them and you miss them or hitting a brick wall. Think about it. Low speed mobility lanes is essentially what bike lanes are becoming. These autonomous pods like Drew are going to be utilizing that. If you remember when GM brought Bright Drop out, they originally had the Bright Drop delivery units with it. The side of the Bright Drop vans opened up in these at least eight to ten of these little delivery units, kind of look like you know your toolboxes you have in your garage, coming out to go and deliver. Well, even in a suburban area, like you got about ten deliveries and there's 30 different houses but only 10 of those are getting deliveries this van can pull off to the side of the road into the low speed mobility lane unload all of these delivery units and wait for them to return. They're staying out of the flow of traffic. A lot of cities out there have already made it so that companies like Uber and Uber Eats, DoorDash, all these companies can utilize these low speed mobility lanes. If they stop in the main throughway of traffic, impeding more of a danger to the flow of traffic. Like I said, putting a brick wall up, just dropping a brick wall in the middle of I-95 in Detroit is going to cause more of an issue than setting up a brick wall on Wall Street in New York. Setting up a brick wall on one of these low speed mobility lanes, those vehicles are moving so slow they won't even realize it because they will just see it as an obstacle in the way. Like a pothole they had to avoid. A slower vehicle they had to avoid. If a bicycle can stop on a bike lane to get a picture of an amazing view then cities look at the fact that Uber Eats is delivering your food to your house. Their stop is not going to be more than five minutes, unless you chant their ear off, like really you're not supposed to. And with a lot of those situations, all they do is drop it off at the door, ring the doorbell, and walk away. So their vehicle is stopped for less than 60 seconds. Stopping in the flow lane, though, so along Bancroft Corridor and Middle Lake, stopping in the middle of that through lane to even make a left-hand turn impedes more traffic traffic during rush hour than if I pull off into the low speed mobility lane because all of those little autonomous pods can go around me. If you've ever heard of a company called RC Moto, you've seen their products and they build these really neat single capacity vehicles. They're built for in cities. They don't have any sides. They essentially just have three wheels, a power unit, and a windshield. You can get them with one seat or two seats. There are a lot of single occupancy vehicles similar to this out there. 
And these little single occupancy vehicles are going to be able to utilize these low speed mobility lanes. Why? Because they won't have to impede the flow of traffic. I don't know if you've ever run into this situation where somebody in an electric wheelchair has decided to drive their wheelchair on a driving lane and a main throughway. I've experienced this on the Kingsway actually once during rush hour. There is a sidewalk that they can utilize. There is no bike lane on this main throughway because there is one in more of the suburban urban areas not along the main throughway. So instead of utilizing the sidewalk because you are slower and people walking have the ability to avoid you, they decide to drive in the driving lane. Well, if you've seen the new Fiat Topolinos, built up the Citroen MEs. These are built for children. Essentially in Italy, you could be 13 years old and drive one of these things because they don't go over 50 kilometers an hour, similar to that of an e-bike. You ever see some of those e-bikes? They look like street bikes. They're really cool. My buddy's got one. Seriously, a lot of people think he's cruising around on an actual street bike. And he's like, no, it's an, it's an e-bike. I can't even go over, you know, 45 kilometers an hour. So for him, the low speed mobility lanes are where he has to drive. He can't can drive in driving lanes in specific areas where the speed limit isn't at a higher rate. Coming out to my place, he would have to use the bike lane on the side of the road because driving in the driving lane, he's literally going to get hit by transports or company trucks. But all of these brand new delivery pods, you may think are years and years away, but they are not. Domino's Pizza is already utilizing Drew and the Nero autonomous delivery vehicles. And even Kruger is starting to use the Nero delivery vehicles for grocery delivery. Amazon is considering looking at autonomous technology for their next scale vans, getting into those last mile delivery vans. The Rivian vans are great because they can store a ton of stuff, but when you're in a downtown core, like downtown New York City, they can have little miniature warehouses to spread things out across areas of four to five block radiuses. We can also use someone like Drew to deliver products for you. And now that we have these low speed mobility lanes, bike lanes as everybody calls them now, now, Drew can go out and deliver these products without impeding the flow of traffic or impeding the flow of pedestrians, allowing our world to be a little more safer and allowing us to get more of our product delivered quicker and on time. Autonomous pods are part of our future, and we need infrastructure for these guys to get around. And consider the fact that cities for the past 20 years have been trying to get people to be more healthy, the low speed mobility lanes of the future are just gonna have to tell bikes to get out of the way. Where bicycles are now gonna become a hazard within those lanes. It doesn't mean you get to move out into the high speed mobility lanes, the main throughway. It means just your lane is gonna have a lot more traffic on it. Like I said in the intro, these new bike lanes that they put over 20 years ago in don't get a lot of usage. So there's massive room for expansion. It's kind of like putting a brand new interstate through Montana back in the 60s. Not a lot of population and not a lot of people around it. How can we utilize it better? Oh wait, we don't need to ship as much product by train anymore. We could ship it via transport. So transports took more use of it. Similar to that, how we talked about future infrastructure. Freeways will become more of a mainstay from city to city, essentially going from main industrial and commercial centers, so like your distribution centers, your Walmarts, and your manufacturing facilities between cities. Major centers will have delivery units that go out, utilizing main throughways and causeways. When you get into more of the urban areas, you'll start breaking it down to streets and low speed mobility lanes. With the future of more things being delivered right to our doorstep, a usage of bike lanes that we have spent the past 20 years building is going to come into play. So the future of you getting products delivered to your house all depends on how much your city is investing in building these low speed mobility lanes. Everybody today may call them bike lanes, but 10 years from now when Domino's is delivering pizza to everybody's house utilizing these bike lanes, somebody's going to cut it through their head and say, these are not bike lanes. Lanes. There is more delivery product heading out on these lanes now than bicycles. These are just part of the main throughway, but for lower speed vehicles. Hence, the low speed mobility lanes. They're a big part of our future and everywhere needs them. People seem to think that small towns don't need them. Well, if a small town wishes to have delivery units out to an aging population, these low speed mobility lanes may come in handy along your main throughway. But then again, when there's not that much traffic, everybody can just use utilize the standard throughway.
Safety has always come into play with every form of transportation networks that we've built. We bank the curves of our highways, and then we bank them even more when we built freeways. We built in more safety standards by putting up barriers to keep us from crossing the center line, from adding reflective materials. To today, thinking that we're installing these lanes to get people out and become more healthy, where essentially these lanes will be the rivers of food for the future. As everybody says, online we have the information superhighway. Well, in the future, we will have the low-speed mobility highways with a constant flow of autonomous pods, delivery vehicles, and bicycles. Everything that doesn't travel faster than 50 kilometers an hour will be pushed onto these lanes. And I'm sorry to say, but everybody who believes that bike lanes are the devil's advocate and they don't get paid for. Well, you're right in that context because bicycles do not pay for the road that they travel on, similar to that how electric cars don't pay for the roads they travel on. Gas tax pays for a, a large percentage of the roads you travel on. Well, now with these autonomous pods moving over top of those lanes, the delivery of product and taxation of the delivery of that product will soon come into play, and these low-speed mobility lanes will have the tax they require to sustain them for future development. Welcome to the future. It may seem slow, and it may seem kind of odd right now, but give it another 10 years, and you'll start to see why every major city is heavily investing in these lanes. Because I don't know about you, but I'd prefer if my pizza didn't get run over by a transport barreling down the freeway near my house. I'd prefer if it just took the low-speed mobility lane and brought me my pizza in safety. So, are bike lanes a plausible effect for the infrastructure requirements of the future? Yes, they are. And where everybody seems to think that they're just for bicycles, they are wrong. Because if we said that about the roadways that we first started paving in the late 1800s for our motorized carriages, when trucks came along and then transports came along, they wouldn't have been invited to utilize that infrastructure. Interstates weren't just built for the delivery of products and the mobility of people through major centers. They were built for all forms of mobility that could travel at those specific rates of speed. So bike lanes may lose their luster as being a dedicated lane for a product that doesn't pay for it. When cities and urban centers around the world realize there is something more to this game. And yes, to go back to the very beginning of this podcast, when I was in that, that board meeting and I asked that question, their answer back to me was, we are looking at the infrastructure development for the future and all of the new future technology that we see utilizing these bike lanes. So yes, even the city itself was looking at all of the new low speed delivery products coming out. They knew they're coming and they know why they need these lanes. So if you like this podcast, please like, share, or comment about it. Go on our site, go to the podcast, go to the, any of the streaming site that you're on right now. Give us a review, give us a rating, and help spread the word of the Autolux podcast. And help the low-speed mobility lanes that are coming to the urban centers around us. The Autolux podcast has been brought to you by Ecom Entertainment Group and distributed by Podbeam.com. The Autolux podcast is hosted by the one and only doctor to the automotive industry, Mr. Everett J. And if you would like to get in contact with Everett J or the Autolux podcast, please send us an email over at email at autolux.net. And after you've done that, stop by the website, take a check at autolux.net and where it all began. Check out some of our ratings and if you're looking for information, some of our fans have given us some pretty cool websites over the years and we have found some amazing websites from over the years. So either go to the features page, the help page, or our world famous corporate links website which brings you to nearly every major automaker from around the globe all on the autolux.net website i'm everett j and from the whole autolux team here strap yourself in for this one fun wild ride that bikes whoever thought would take us on